Last match of today, it is the Armageddon Dota 2 Asia Grand Slam. I am Gods from Beyond the Summit here casting live in Singapore at the Marina Bay Sands Convention Center. Those of you in Singapore, well, why aren't you here? This is the place to be this weekend. We've got four days of fantastic Dota 2 action. This is the end of day two. We've got two Filipino teams going head... Whoa, that was, that was not meant to come out. Head to head in our last match of today. Tomorrow we can move on to the winner bracket matches. The winner bracket semi-finals. We've got teams such as ABC, First Departure, Harosh competing. But today, one more game to end things on. And this is, well, going to be a fantastic one. Pinoy Dota is uh, definitely something very entertaining. We expect to see a lot of kills. Expect to see a lot of aggression. We've got Gangster from the Philippines as well as Phil Pacific Esports Club, number two from the Philippines as well. They're playing over on the Radiant side with the Gangster Black team over on the Dire side. First pick going the way of the Dire team. They banned up the, the Life Sealer, Keeper of the Light, and then we see the TA as well as Batrider being banned by the Pacific squad. It does leave Rubik in the pool, getting a first pick there. So both Nyx Assassin as well as Magnus do get gifted to the Pacific Esports side, and I'll have to see how this draft looks to shape out from there. Big thanks to everyone who has been tuned in throughout the day on the live stream, being entertained by the Dota 2 action, being entertained by the, the filler stuff in between, as well as the fantastic camera work coming out from the uh, Rapture camera guy here. And of course... Of course, I can't really miss our sponsors. Big thanks to all the sponsors here at the Armageddon Dota 2 Asia Grand Slam. E-Club, AMD, Star Hub, Asus, Rapture Gaming Network, Zook, where I'm heading later on tonight, Sonic Ear, as well as Power Logic. And uh, without those guys, it would not be possible that we're here in Singapore for the grand finals of this event. And uh, for this match here, Pacific vs. Gangster, well, we're seeing our next couple picks come out. Gangster, it worked for them last game. Let's see if it works for them again. They go for the Night Stalker. Last game, the captain Heinrich had a fantastic showing on him on the mid lane. It was like an 11-minute rampage or something going his way. They get the Wisp as well as their other support here. We'll see how this looks to shape their lineup. They need something as far as a carry hero to combo with the Wisp. Knight Stalker most likely going to be in that solo mid role. And then we see the Rubik Wisp forming some sort of a trial. They want some sort of aggressive farming carry hero. Knight Stalker, well, he's aggressive in his own merit. This is really looking to be all about action and high aggression. Pacific... At this point, they're going to be saying, oh, crap, we need some heroes who can sort of avoid these ganks. You've got Nyx Assassin with Carapace, Magnus and Skewer out of there, but these are still melee heroes who are weak in the laning stage. They kind of need another strong, stable support hero. Shadow Demon is still in the pool. Have to wait and see whether he goes with something along those lines, or, well, maybe you find aggression with some aggression of your own. Pacific Esports thinking through this third pick, though. Queen of Paints still in the pool. They want to go for that strong solo mid. Can run Mag in the offlane. Although generally we've been seeing Magnus mostly plays a sword mid. There's your Queen of Pain. Pacific Esports don't waste any time. Queen of Pain it is. Well, they waste a bit of time. 23 seconds of their reserve time is out the door, but it's definitely worthwhile using that to make sure they have the right hero composition to take on Gangster. As mentioned, guys, this is our last match of today, but what match is it? It's a loser bracket round three match. The loser of this is going to be the six-team knockdown. We had 12 teams flowing in from all over Asia to come to Singapore to compete in the Grand Finals here. Five of them have already been knocked out. Unfortunately, well, by the, tomorrow we're only going to have six teams left in the tournament. We'll have two teams in the loser bracket, and then we'll have the four winner bracket semifinals. We've got ABC, Harosh, First Departure, as well as Awake over in the winner bracket. In the loser bracket, well, we've got the winner of this match as well as the other loser bracket team who, well, I think it's the Indonesian team. It's the, uh, the Indonesian team, uh, Reborn, who are still in the loser bracket as well. So those are your six teams. Well, your seven teams, as uh, we're going to have to wait and see who gets knocked out here. As uh, a couple more picks going to be coming the way of both teams here. What's going to be the last few picks here? The last band's coming out. Gangster opting to ban support. They realize it's the main gap in the Pacific lineup. They could run that. Oh, they most likely will run the Nyx Assassin as a support. Especially considering that the, the main stable sort of hard supports, Shadow Demon Disrupt, and now being banned out. Keep of the Lights being banned out. This last band probably also going to come on a support hero. Something like a Lena or a Lestrak. Disruptor, also a very smart band when you're up against the Wisp. You have to be so worried about that glimpse, sending back whoever you bring in, or possibly just sending them back the Wisp, allowing you to isolate the carry hero who Wisp has brought in. And now we see the last couple bands coming out. Pacific. Getting into their extra time now. It's going to be a CK band. They're worried about who can team up with the Wisp. First the Enigma band. I hear that Gangster did run last game, and then we look at the CK. So we're looking at heroes that can combo with the Wisp. The Wisp CK gets taken out of the pool, and, well, what else can you look to put the Wisp with? You've got the Ricky. I want to see a Wisp Ricky. It is sort of one of those Filipino strats they do pull out every now and then. Are we going to be looking to see it here once again? 
What else do we otherwise have as far as uh, heroes to go with the, the Wisp? Lifestealer, he's been banned out. We saw a Juggernaut Wisp at one point in the tournament, but it'd be surprising if Gangster looks to pull that out here. But maybe we're looking at the Wisp Juggernaut. Ten, but really, ten, come ten. on, man. Pick up that pick up that Ricky. The smoke is a great counter to the Queen of Pain. You can Five, prevent seven, Mag from skewering an ultimate as well. I don't see any reason why not. Let's let's wait and see. The draft is now coming towards its conclusion as uh, the last band coming out of Gangster. And we've got our last couple of picks. So far, it's been all targets onto support heroes. If Nyx is going to be a, a support, there will be a need for a carry hero here. So they sort of do have to worry about the farmers. Something like a Luna could easily be picked up by this specific squad if they want to run Nyx, Luna in some sort of a try line. They've got the Mag and the Queen of Paint to fill the two solo roles then. And Ganks are really whittling down their time here. The team who's, well, defied the odds. They've made it pretty deep in this tournament. Have to see if they can get even further here. Sven going to be the ban. A potential possible support and farmer. That's really well. The beauty of banning out Sven is he can fit in as a support. He can also fit in as a carry. So ban him out and you've basically knocked out two, two birds with one stone. But at the same time, there's heroes who can sort of fit one of those roles a whole lot better. If you're looking for a support to go with uh, the Knicks, Lena or Lashrak fits a lot better. If you're looking for a carry, Luna does a lot better than the Sven. So in some ways, it's great to knock out a hero who can do both, but there's heroes who also feel the support and carry role. If you're just looking for one or the other, a lot better. Last band now for Pacific. What are they worried about? Got to be thinking who can combo with the Wisp. I mean, even just with the Night Stalker. Sure, we're not we're most likely seeing a solo Night Stalker, but come mid-game time, Wisp can look to abandon whoever the Farmer is. They can just get a Luna or something. If Gangster really want, grab a Luna for May, run a Rubik Luna Wisp lane, and once it's come mid-game time, Wisp just goes around with the Night Stalker. Bring Night Stalker into the fights, help keep Night Stalker alive, and give him that extra movement speed. Really get nice and aggressive. And I think it's something Pacific are worried about. They know that they can still just pick up a hard carry in this lineup. So they ban out the anti-mage. Luna's still in the pool, though. Do we look towards that Luna pick, or do we go somewhere else? As it's going to be a Nature's Prophet. Ooh, I like this. More aggression, more sort of global ganking coming out. You have the Nature's Prophet who can TP anywhere. You've got the Wisp who can be anywhere on the map with another teammate. Essentially, three heroes who can just be anywhere on the map at any time. If they really want to go all out with this split push and global ganking, you get something like a Tinker. Although, realistically, I don't think they want a Tinker. I think they want something with a bit more sort of DPS. The Luna would just fit in so, so well. Alternatively, something like a Faceless Void. If you want something with a bit more, uh, a bit more late game carry potential as well as Lockdown with the Chronosphere. You've got something which is also a bit harder to kill. And uh, having a Chronosphere against a Queen of Pain, a Mag, Nyx Assassin, these series, you want to lock him down, be able to kill him off. Luna can't quite do the same thing. You can't really have that, that same kind of Lockdown. You do get some disable coming out from the Rubik with the Telekinesis and the Night Stalker Silence, but possibly not enough to bring down, to basically take on Queen of Pain and Mag in a team fight. Their mobility and their, their basically team fight potential is there. Question is, can they turn that potential energy into kinetic energy? Can they get that early momentum? Can they look to bring down Gangster Who? Well, they, they looked really solid last game. They were completely dominating in their match against GOG. There's uh, the fourth pick coming up now from the Pacific Esports side. Who's it going to be from them? They've already got, I mean, mostly their, their main core heroes. This is less track for the time being. So another support hero to do with the Nyx Assassin. Or uh, possibly... Oh, Bounty Hunter. This is like an IG style lineup. All out face rush. It's the constant aggression. You have the Night Stalker, Bounty Hunter. And it's a Nature's Prophet instead of well, what we've seen maybe a Sven. When IG did this, it was Bounty Hunter, Night Stalker, and Sven. But Nature's Prophet fits in nicely because he can be teeping around being very aggressive. And he can go for that mech. Get the mech for your team. Provide that heal for when you're looking to get aggressive on the map. Teeping around, providing a lot of ganking sources. And I really like what Gangster have done with this. They can run, well, Nature's Prophet in the safe lane if they want. Even the safe lane Bounty Hunter. And send Nature's Prophet into that off lane. There's a number of different ways they can look to lane this. DK is going to be the last pick. Pinoy Dota. Well, there's a DK pick. Nico's going to be grabbing that one up. And it looks like we could be seeing a safe lane farming DK, not your traditional solo mid. As other two teams will look to pick up their heroes, get things out and underway here in our final match of today. Things are heating up here, guys, in Singapore. Armageddon, Dota 2, Asia, Grand Slam. We've got one more match today and then tomorrow, well, we've got really the games everyone's been waiting for. The winner bracket semifinals. We've got ABC up against First Departure. We've got Awake up against Harosh, and then we have your other loser bracket matches. 
But for now, we've got a bit of a Pinoy treat. We've got Pacific Esports over on the radiant side representing the Philippines, as mentioned. We see Lennon Demon playing the Mag. We've got Question Mark to the fourth playing the Queen of Pain. Nieke is playing the Nyx Assassin. Lestrek being played by KIR. And then Dragon Knight in the hands of Nico representing the Philippines as well. Unfortunately, after this match, there's only going to be one Filipino team less in the tournament. Well, good or bad, new bad news, depending on how you look on The good news is there's at least one Filipino team. The bad news is one is going to get knocked out. The dire side, it is going to be Team Gangster Black. We've got Jobik playing the Rubik. Night Stalker in the hands of May. So May, generally the carry player. Possibly going to see him in that safe lane because he's, I mean, traditionally plays the safe lane carry role. Wisp being played by Heinrich and Bounty Hunter being played by All Is Well. Apparently it's not Ali. I got corrected by the players. It's All Is Well. And then we've got our final player. It's Arsian. Traditionally the jungle player for, uh, for the gangsters. So if we look at who's playing what, the general solo mid player is Heinrich. Heinrich normally goes towards that mid lane. Arsian normally goes in that jungle, but playing heroes that don't really go there. You don't often see a Wiz solo mid, and we'll see what the lanes are in just a second, guys. Unfortunately, the teams can hear me, so I can't quite reveal these lanes just yet, but you guys at home, you guys watching the live stream, you know just what's coming out here from these two teams. As other creep wave is going to come out now. We'll see some sick Pacific logos here at the mid lane. I love how Dota 2 works with these logos in game, and... Uh, both teams getting the early wards up. Try scout the runes. Try scout your enemy lanes. That's what you want to do before the creep wave hits. But now we're going to have our, our lane matchup realized. Queen of Fane at the mid lane up against her. Wait, what? It's a Wisp. Wisp is soloing the mid lane. The Night Stalker from last game, Mr. Heinrich, the captain, is going to be playing a solo mid Wisp. And that leaves Walt Night Stalker to free farm safe lane. If you want a fast level 6 Wisp and a really aggressive ganking Night Stalker, this is the way to do it. Send Wisp to the solo mid roll to get very fast levels. And then you have, well, the Free Farm and Night Stalker at top lane. What does it give for uh, Pacific? DK in the safe lane. He's up against an off lane Bounty Hunter. Where are the supports for the Radiant team, though? They want to be using pools at bottom lane. Also trying to zone out this Bounty Hunter as well as possible. As it looks like Heinrich at mid lane. Playing very, very defensive here. He notices all these supports are missing. Nyx Assassin missing. Lestrak missing. And he's going he's gonna to play this nice and safe. Nyx trying to use his mid pool. Buddy, that doesn't work anymore. The recent patch made it so that I don't think you can actually use that mid pool anymore. Need to read those patch notes. Need to read, the, read those patch notes. DK versus Bounty Hunter at the bottom lane. And it's essentially right now a 1v1 matchup. The supports haven't really shown up until now. Nyx is testing going from early game pools at mid lane, but not really succeeding in doing so. And he's just going to keep wasting his time at this mid lane. DK with the quelling blade. That's how they cut down these trees. DK shuts him down, tries to put the Nyx Assassin, but I don't think it's going to work. This sure as hell isn't going to work. This is a completely different route that he's trying to take. Top lane, how's the offlane mag doing? Yeah, it's got the one point in skewer, so just trying to get whatever XP he can get. But right now, it's not a whole lot because they're using these pools. They're denying farm, they're denying XP from him. The Night Stalker, Rubik, dual lane. They've got Nature's Prophet just sitting in the jungle here. We'll be looking to see if Nature's Prophet looks to get aggressive and start ganking soon. But for the time being... Both teams essentially running dual lanes. And oh, he's got him. I said you can't mid-pull. Well, Nyx just hasn't proved me wrong. They made it a whole lot harder, but apparently it's still possible. Cut, cut down enough trees, get that pathway. And he does manage to get it off. Heinrich. He's uh, found himself a regen rune, so he's back to full HP and mana. Also brings in his bottle, using just those wisp spirits to farm as much as possible. Problem is, it's Queen of Pain who's dominating this mid-farm war. Eight creeps, eight denies. Wisp just 2-0. and oh. The early game pressure coming from the support heroes. Mag was sitting on top of mid with an invis rune as well. And Wisp realized, well, it's a dangerous lane to be in. He just has to give space and farm to the Queen of Pain. Not because he, not because it's a losing lane from, but just because of the support rotation. He's not really sure where they are. And here comes Nyx Assassin. Blink, Shadow Strike. Oh, Wisp going to tether stun. He does get impaled by Nyx Assassin. What level is this Nyx? Level 2 doesn't have mana for a mana burn, though. Looks like we're going to see a keep continual chase. So there's Blink up in just a second. There's your mana, but this should be the end of the week. Blink screen. One more right click. Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. Queen of Pain gets the first blood. Brings down Heinrich at the mid lane. Nice bit of play there. Nyx Assassin, do we need a bit more mana for the mana bone? He pops the clarity just to give him that extra mana he needed. And once Queen of Pain has another Blink, they get that first blood. And Wiz, just level three. You send the Wiz solo mid to get the early levels. 
and you're not really succeeding in doing so. It's one of those interesting heroes to see you get shut down. Not often do you look to prioritizing sense, prioritize sending so many heroes mid just to shut down a solo mid wisp. If it's like a shadow fiend there, great, but that's not really what we're seeing. As uh, while we're paused, we'll take another quick look at that last first blood here, guys. It was uh, wisp. Well, you lead with the impale. Well, they led with the shadow strike. Actually, the shadow strike slow was what allowed Nyx assassin to get in range for an impale. And the other bad decision wisp made was he stood and fought. He should have just immediately ran away as uh, there was backup coming in the form of the Nyx. If he ran right away, maybe he gets out of range of that Impale, but unfortunately for him, it doesn't work out for him too well. As uh, Pacific, looks like Queen of Pain has reconnected in. The teams are ready to go, and we're back live with more Pinoy Dota 2 action. Pacific up against Gangster. First Blood's already been struck at the mid lane, and we'll see how Pacific look to move from here. Nyx still adamant about this mid pull. Waiting for that clarity wear off as well. He wants to make sure he gets the most out of that. Top lane, Mag. He's up to level three despite being in that off lane. The dual lane with a, a Rubik and Nice, we just don't have the ability to really bring him down. And there we go. Succeeds once again, proving me wrong. The changes Valve have made to the mid ball, still possible to do it. Now we see top lane, Mag, up against this Night Stalker. Well, level four only on the Night Stalker to the level three Mag. So they haven't done a very good job of zoning him out of this lane. Similar thing at bottom lane though. Bounty Hunter level 4. Actually out-leveling this mag, so he's had an even better time as an offlane hero. Oh, making sure Queen of Pain doesn't get this rune. Nature's Prophet just basically teasing with a TP there. He was just going to continue farming in the jungle, but if he had to TP to make sure he denied that rune or at least got it for himself, he would have. And Wisp bottles up the double damage rune. Two level advantage on the Queen of Pain. And here we go again. Impel going to land just at the tip of it. And this will be the end of the wisp. One more right click. Queen of Pain gets the kill. The Shadow Strike damage was there. <laughs> Top lane. Mag, he's found himself some creeps. He's going to get pulled back in here. Can they look to go on him? There is a skewer out. Just a level one skewer. He's already slowed up. If Nigel can get close enough for another one. Oh, Nate's his profit. He's showing up. He's got Sprout if he needs it. He's going to use it. There's a void coming out from the Night Stalker. So gets the kill. More, well, just as importantly, gets some urn charges. He's gone for this fast urn. He needs the urn charges and he's now going to find them. Earn phase boots, a very aggressive Night Stalker build coming out. May, who traditionally plays their hard carry, while well, we're looking at an aggressive carry at this. Phase earn, then maybe we look at some carry items. Maybe we look towards something like an armlet, but for the time being, he's going to quite happily go for these, uh, these more aggressive, ganky style of items. And we'll see Bounty Hunter with all these levels at bottom lane. He's going to hit level 6 soon. Then we get the track gold into play, and that's where Gangster look to start snowballing. Nighttime still hasn't hit yet. It's going to be coming up soon, though. And with Phase Boots and an earn up already, Night Stalker is going to be a very, very powerful threat. Mag level 4. And once we hit Night, we'll have to wait and see if Night Stalker looks to leave this lane, or at least they have to look for a kill in this mag. They want to look to get aggressive again. Nature's probably seen him get once. We'll look to see some more ganks come out. He needs to really get some items up, though. This is not a game where Nature's probably can be playing that sort of mech utility support hero. He's going to go carry. Whether it's a Midas Shadow Blade, Midas Sheep Stick, whatever it may be, he needs some damage. He is looking to build out that Midas here, but with N Night Stalker and, well, Night Stalker and Bounty Hunter as your sort of two gankers, not really hard carries, you need some additional range DPS, and that's going to come from the Nature's Prophet. As holy crap, it is damn freaking loud here at the IT Festival, as uh, some of you guys may have noticed on the live stream. Ooh, bottom lane. DK going to go in on the Bounty Hunter. Chain Stun, can they get it? Yes, they do. Central World, where is it? Doesn't plan it. It looks like they weren't confident that they could get the kill. I don't think he realized that he hit the split earth. Sentry as well, off to the side. And Bounty Hunter gets out of there. He's now level six as well. Magic one brace are being built as well. He's going for the he's going for the drum of endurance build. Trying to stall this push at the bottom lane. Drops a shrew can just help him farm. He's gonna go back to heal probably pretty soon. I think he realizes there's not a whole lot he can do to keep this tower alive. If this raiding team want it, they'll get it. Edic is there. DK is there with the digital damage. He's actually tracked up. Knight took his TP in, he's going to get stunned immediately, and unfortunately for him that could be, could be trouble, but here's Nature's Prophet with the TP in. Who are they going to go for? Less track is the much squishier option, but DK, he's got the track on him. No track gold on the less track, and here comes the more counter game. Queen of Pain, Mag, they both come into the bottom lane. Mag got level 6 here, he's got one kill, let's make it two. Sonic Wave clips, double kill for the Queen of Pain. Both Nature's Prophet and Bounty had to go down. Fantastic counter game coming out from the Pacific team. They've got themselves two kills at the bottom, and they really reacted well to that Knight Stalker TP. Night Stalker forced to go, well, elsewhere. 
Mid lane is now open for the Wizard. He's level six. When all said and done, it's a good trade for the Pacific team. We've got Nyakers at the top lane. Finding himself getting some farm. They initially played as a support, but now he's like, hey, I can get some farm myself. He's not level six, though, and I'm 14 for him. That could be his death. In comes Nice Walker from the side. Need to see a Karras. Oh, no. He TPs out in front of them. You've got to save that Void. As soon as he used the Void, Nyx Assassin TPs out. Bit of a misplay there from the Night Stalker. I think he maybe expect Rubik to have mana for a telekinesis, but Rubik was out of the mana when that TP come in, came in. He has mana for it now, but at the time, the mana burn prevented him from having a telekinesis, and as a result, as soon as that Void was used, Nyx Assassin TPs out. Really smart, perceptive play coming from him. As both teams, well... Just getting some vision up. Pacific, do they look to defend this tier one top? They haven't really, they're not really up against a strong pushing lineup. They definitely can get there and just try to spam them down. With shockwaves, with some less track lightning storms. Oh, Night Stalker, maybe looks to get aggressive here. It's not really the Magnum to go and it's this less track who's very prone to being ganked. Wish spirits are going to scout the Nyx Assassin, so they know he's there in the trees now. I'll have to be careful. Be very careful with what they look to do at the top lane. Queen of Pain has a TP as well. Not just a TP, but a TP with a bottled haste room. If they go in the top, Queen of Pain will be TPing in in the flash. Doesn't have the sonic weight, but even so, a couple screams with a haste room to basically allow you to keep up and basically kite heroes around. Night Stalker as well, as well. Bounty Hunter can't really do much about this Queen of Pain. They can try to focus on Queen of Pain during the telekinesis, but as soon as that telekinesis wears off, Queen of Pain gets out of there. And it's just a level one telekinesis. He's going for points in the null field. So we're not going to be seeing that extra long lockdown. And when there's a haste rune up, well, having a Night Stalker silence isn't going to lock down the Queen of Pain. And Night Stalker hasn't even got any points in his Crippling Fear yet. Because he wasn't a solo mid, he's slightly underleveled. And as a result, well, things not going as easily as he'd hoped for. Dyer's middle tower Mag and Nyx, well, they're trying to hold the la lines at top lane. Knowing that this continual push is happening. Nature's Prophet, still no minus up yet. We have almost 10 minutes in. He'd love to have that up and oh. Hasn't got mana for it. Unfortunately, there's no mana for that mag RP. Queen of Pain going to go in with the haste ring. He's looking for this Rubik. Sonic Wave is up, but Silence is there now there. Make it to Silence. Shockwave actually coming in from the neutral creep. Sabotage from the neutrals. One more right click. Is this going to be enough damage? It doesn't look so. The urn is there. Knock him out of the fish. Anyone off the end? The neutral camp. Wow, this is just working against both teams. It's like we're seeing a third race here in Dota. It's not just Radiant versus Die, it's Radiant versus Die and versus Neutrals here at the top lane. And Gangster, they come out on top. The Neutrals suffer a few losses, as does Pacific. They lose to Nyx Assassin. Luckily for them, they kept Queen of Pain alive. Night Stalker with the Bounty Hunter and Rubik at top lane. Once again, looking to apply pressure at top. Try to get this tower down. Nyx going to TP back in and try and stop him. Mag is there, but oh, Mag, once again, still no mana. Impale going to hit multiple heroes, as does the Shockwave. Oh, Tower, it's on Night Stalker. Got to be careful there, and I think this is going to be them retreating. He's got to go heal up at Fountain. Even if he finds a rune and able to bottle something up, he's still so low on HP. And the Tier 1 Tower does get defended. Have to be another rainy day when Gangster come back and look to finish that off. Elsewhere, it was actually bottom lane. The Tier 1 Tower actually goes down. DK finished off the Tier 1 bottom tower, and... Here we go, Pinoy Dota, we've got your DK and he's got, well, your traditional item. He's had that Shadow Amulet, so he is going to be going for a Shadow Blade. And once he's got that, he looks to sort of set up kills around the map. You use the ultimate form, you go Shadow Blading in, and you basically get a free stun off. Even without the ultimate form up, your Shadow Blade basically sets you up for a nice Dragon Tail. The question is, how much longer until that Shadow Blade is actually going to be up? The Dire team, they're not too aware of it. They've seen the Shadow Amulet, but have they, have they seen how much this DK is farming? Do they know when that Shadow Blade is coming? Queen of Pain at mid lane, trying to just push this out, get some chip damage dealt to the Tier 1. Leshrak is there with the Edict, level 2 on that. And this Tier 1 tower taking a lot of damage. Lift gets forced out, and the Dire team just timing it so that basically blocks a lot of that Edict damage. And here comes the TPs. It's Leshrak who's getting tracked out. Uh-oh, Leshrak. You in trouble. Here comes Night Stalker. Nyx Assassin. Double hero impale. Perfectly placed. Queen of Pain with the Sonic Wave. Trying to bring down Rubik as well as Night Stalker. They've taken one. Can they get more? But Wizard's flowing in. The relocator's there. Nyx Assassin. Silence. He's going to get brought down now. Oh, Queen of Pain. Cheeky, cheeky. Trying to kite these heroes around. There's, just, there's a scream and it instantly blinks out though. 
Mag blocked by some trains here. Where's the Nature's Prophet? Has he got level 6? He does, but he hasn't got the ultimate here. DK finishes off the Night Stalker. The Shadow Blade initiation is there. Sonic Wave actually gets stolen by the Rubik. Doesn't do much damage, though. Of all the Sonic Waves he was after, that was just a bit pitiful. And it's Pacific who win a team fight at the mid lane. Gonna follow it up with a tier 1 tower as well. As they find themselves up, 7 kills to 5 and dead even on gold. Whoa, Wisp! Skewer, RP, Shockwave, one more right click from the DK, there's your kill. Mag quite happy to use that just for a solo kill. And now we see Pacific, they back off with another kill in their hands. Even with the Mag RP on court, and it's definitely worth using just for a kill here, especially if they're not expecting a team fight soon. They don't even need a team fight in the near future, they just want to keep on farming. Get these Queen of Pain next items up, get some Arcane Boots on the supports, get Mag his Blink Dagger and get DK, well, I guess it's BKB. He's had this Shadow Armor, but he wants his next big item, and he's also a bit under-leveled. Playing in that safe lane, not having the solar mid, he doesn't quite get the levels you'd normally expect. Nature's probably the top, has got that Midas completed now, and he's well on his way to getting quite a decent amount of farm. Drops the ultimate, just for good measure. Tower, top actually gets denied. But yeah, Nature's probably, normally you want to save this ultimate. Wait for a team fight, wait for a gang. Using it, just spamming it, isn't normally a good idea, because you'll maybe get a couple creeps, but you push out the lanes, you also miss creeps. Think of all the creeps you're missing, missing by pushing out the lanes and not quite timing well. Like you, you get all these down to half HP and then you get finished off by the, the, your own creep wave. It's gold being missed out on, so generally you don't want to spam it whenever it's up. Oh, Queen of Pain, getting very aggressive at the mid lane. And this ultimate all giving all these bonus stats. Once Sonic Wave is up, well, that's going to be a dead wisp. Heinrich needs to be very, very careful. He's got this bottle and headdress. He is looking to build up a mech here. Question is, how much longer till we see that? Bounty at mid lane. Oh, he's walked right into the Nyx Assassin here. Nyx completely out of mana, though. Can't actually use another Impale. I think his first Impale actually missed the Bounty Hunter. Is there a track? Yes, there is. He's going to have to retreat out. He sees the last track lining up a stun. Pretty straightforward sidestep there as uh, now we see. Well, the Dire team, they, they avoid a potential threat there. But they're not really making much happen in the other lanes. They've got Night Stalker farming a top one, but this is not a carry hero. The one here who can maybe offer them some carry potential is going to be this Nature's Prophet. And well, when it's Pino Dota, one Shadow Blade is never enough. You've got to get a second, and it's going to come in the form of the Nature's Prophet. He's got his Claymore, he just needs his Shadow Amulet. Question is, who else can get one? I miss the old days where we would see Bounty Hunters getting Shadow Blades. The Bulba build. Get the basically the damage from the Janata, or the Janata, the Shadow Walk, as well as the Shadow Blade. All three of those stacking together. If you time the, sh time the Shadow Blade with that, oh man, top lane, they've gone in for a kill here. Wrist and Night Stalker teaming up, they found Magnus. Completely missed that kill, unfortunately, but here we go, is there going to be retaliation? It looks like Pacific are not quite in position to do so just yet. Oh, DK is there, leads with an attack, falls up with a DK stun. And Nyx Assassin going to bring down the Nature's Prophet with a mana burn. Night Stalker now running in, unfortunately it's now back to daytime. Oh no, of all the times for that night to end. Wiss now back in the playing field. Sonic Wave gets used by Queen of Pain. It gets stolen though, I think. Rubik is stolen. Sonic Wave again. It's a level 2 Sonic Wave. Has he got mana though? He's out of mana. Needs to save these magic six charges. And look at that big AoE stun. Coming out. But unfortunately for Nyx Assassin, it's not going to be enough. Mag goes in. He's looking for an RP. He just gets a skew into a Shockwave. Not enough damage on him though. Backlines. Queen of Pain illusions. Going to chip away at this Wisp here. Try to bring him down. Oh no. Queen of Pain. He smells blood. He smells this Wisp. Wisp man, you've got to be careful, this Queen of Pain is still hunting, blink, scream, one more right click with a double damage room, seals the Wisp's fate. <laughs> Looks like an even trade at the top lane. I think it was a two for two trade, all said and done. Pacific still up by three kills, 11 kills to eight right now. As that, uh, oh look at this. Playing round around the Rosie at bottom lane. TK was, was looking for that Nature's Prophet, Nature's Prophet was just juking and jiving around some trees. Did manage to get out, get away. Mid lane bounty hunter, what he's got, he's trying to get up that drum of endurance, not quite up yet, and we haven't really seen that snowball come in just yet. The face thrust lineup, gangs have not been as aggressive and as successful in getting kills as they would like here. They're trying to go in on mid here, T1 tower is up, Nyx Assassin, Carapace ends, Tether Sun is there as well as the Shuriken, and there's some track gold. TP from the mag, and he's knocked to find the initiation, he's hoping, well mag, oh he misses the RP! It looks like the bounty hunter was expecting it to be coming in, he goes into Shadow Walk now and he's going to survive this one. Oh, Mag. Not the best of RPs from him. Lennon Damon. 
He's now forced to back off. And uh oh, in once again comes the Wisp as well. The Banyan is the Skewer even up. Skewer on cooldown from that previous fight. And Mag should get brought down here. One more right click gonna be needed from the Wisp. Yes, he gets the kill. Queen of Pain trying to fight his way out of this one. In comes the DK. He TPs in, make sure they bring down one in return. Wisp goes down. This Wisp is looking very, very squishy, even with this mech up. The Queen of Pain AoE with the help of well the DK there and the flame breath. Managed to turn things turn things into a well a two for one trade. They get the mag, they get the Nyx, but they lose the Wisp. Meanwhile, bottom lane, we've got the Nature's Prophet. He's farming away, still trying to get that Shadow Blade of his. The rest of his team trying to get some farm of their own. Night Stalker, still no BKB up yet. And once he's got that, the team fight for, well, Gangster looks a whole lot better. As well as this next nighttime. It's been daytime for quite some time. And until we see, oh, Nyx, he snipes the creep. He's not going to get this kill, but he's just like, oh, I'll just be annoying. Queen of Pain, actually, they could get the kill with the Queen of Pain here. But the important thing there's there for Nyek is he's like, I'll just take this Sadia creep. Radiant Courier respawns. Okay. Apparently I completely missed a Courier going down. My camera work is nowhere near as good as our uh, in-between game camera work. I need to take some lessons from our cameraman. The future TI3 cameraman who's uh, done some fantastic work in between games. And unlike him, I'm missing all kinds of good action. Not this bottom lane though. Nature's Prophet, he times the last hit on the tower. And with Stuart being used, there's nothing to stop his TP out. TP's back home, he's got a tower, and well, that should be enough gold for his Shadow Blade. Meanwhile, bottom lane, oh, Skewer's on cooldown, and that means dead mag. Where can you hide mag? Absolutely nowhere. The spirits from the Wits are going to scout you out. Silence from the Night Stalker. Gets burst down, and another kill for the Night Stalker, and that basically means his BKB should almost be up. Top lane, engagement now coming out. Wits and Night Stalker, they're back. They're looking for this DK. Have they got vision? They actually do. Track vision is there. Wisp has already brought down the Lestrak and now the chase is on. They're going to sprout up the DK immediately calling Blades out of this sprout, but DK is still getting chased down. Night Stalker is there with a the void. Bounty Hunter still doing enough damage. Shrukin is there. Track Gold as well going the way of the Dire team. And now we see the true potential of this line. Problem is Queen of Pain is here with the Lincoln Sphere trying to fight his way out of this one. I think he's silenced up. He's going to get brought down. Is there enough damage? Urn is there. Actually, it's Rubik who brings him down. I think with those stolen Scream. Rubik, he's, yeah, he stole the Scream of Pain. Finishes off the Queen of Pain with her own medicine. And suddenly, it's the Dire team who were behind for such a long time, finding themselves up 15 kills to 13. Just 19 minutes in this game, constant back and forth aggression. And I wouldn't expect anything less from a Pinoy Dota game. And as it is going to be, Lennon Demon just coming to the top lane. He wants that Blink Dagger up, and he's still, well, he's got a bit of a way to go. He's being constantly caught out. The silence from the Night Soccer basically preventing him from being able to skewer out of there. And then you basically got. The Dire team baiting out his Skewer half the time and then chasing him down using the Wisp ultimate, using that Wisp tether movement speed. And now with Night Stalker with completed BKB, point booster as well. He's looking towards that Ag Scepter. Nature's Prophet, what's his good next item? He's had this Shadow Blade now for a bit. Going to be eyeing off that next big item. He's got this Belt of Giant Sphinx. He's possibly looking at a Necrobook field here or possibly just some Treads. Uh-oh, Wisp. Can they get the mag here? They need a stun soon. They'll get it easily in time. The nighttime vision helps the Night Stalker make sure he can get that off as soon as possible. And well, easy, straightforward kill. Wisp and Night Stalker can go back to where they came from. Nope, not now. They'll, they'll save that for later. Bounty Hunter. Wasn't actually there for the track goal, but either way, there's been quite a bit of track goal going away this this dire team. And now they're going to find Queen of Pain. Silence up. Looks like they broke the Lincolns. They uh, didn't manage to get the silence off. BKB on the Night Stalker, they need to get a bit more damage here before the blink. Oh, just blinks out in time. The earn damage is not going to be enough. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, it's going to be KRL, Less track caught out in a sprout. DK trying to chase down, gets the whiff now, moves on to the Night Stalker. Queen of Flame bling, blinks back enough, healing up a bit from this bottle. And well, things are not going too well this fight. Gangster on the run. Rubik not going to be not gonna be able to get out of there. The stun from the DK, they get three. They only lose the Less track there. They were so close to bringing down Queen of Pain. If they get that Queen of Pain there, well, at worst, maybe it's a two for two trade. Because they would have killed Queen of Pain on Less Track. Rubik at the end should have survived there. I don't even think Night Stalker would have died. Without that Queen of Pain coming back in with some additional damage, that Night Stalker should have probably been able to live. And it shouldn't have been a fight Gangster were taking. They didn't have Bounty Hunter. Bounty Hunter was still in that top lane, farming away, looking to get some more levels for himself. He's looking to build up a BKB. And right now, well, he needs to be, he needs to be involved in as many of these fights as possible. Heinrich. He's got these arcane boots, portal and mech. He needs this more survivability, really. He's getting picked off in a lot of these fights. Nature's Prophet continuing to farm. Arsene at this point is definitely realizing. If he didn't realize it from the start, he's got to go for some damage. He's got to carry. The Shadow Blade to start, but the next big item. 
Well, it's not the Necrobook. He does just go for the treads here with that Belt of Giant Strength. And I imagine it's going to be some sort of DPS. If it's not DPS, you're looking at a Sheepstick, the Scythe of Ice. Queen of Pain, obviously, is going to be feeling a lot safer pushing out these lanes with this Lincoln Sphere. It's going to be a lot harder to bring down this Queen of Pain. They need something to break it. If they have to use Telekinesis to break it, well, then they lose their main source of lockdown. Unless they can immediately follow up with a silence from this Night Stalker. Whisper Night Stalker still looking for action around this map. Can they find anyone? Whisper Spirit's going to scout things out. They see the Queen of Pain now. They see the Mag. Now they see the entire Pacific team. And Whisper, he's overextended so badly. Mag goes in with an RP. They bring down the Whisp right off the bat here. Can they get any more here? It's May in the front lines with the BKB taking a lot of damage. They bring down Mag though. One track kill. Are there more to be picked up? It's actually going to be the Bounty Hunter who takes a fall. I think Sentry Vision was there. Are we looking at a gem even on the Radiant team? Nope, no gem just yet. Just Sentry Vision as well as Dust and Queen of Pain further back. A missed kill actually finds a Night Stalker. Not a hero you expect him to be able to bring down there, but Night Stalker, he was already really low XP from that team fight. And on the back of that team fight, Pacific Esports are going to try to take down this tier 2. Edict is there from the less track. Lift not being used just yet, and well, Nature's Prophet ultimately gets thrown to try to stall this push, but that tier 2 tower is going to go down regardless. DK now level 15 with a BKB Shadow Blade. That BKB paying dividends in that last team fight. Nature's Prophet, there we go, there's your next item. Damage as well as well. A bit of utility as well. Gives you some additional lockdown and silence. We'll see it soon. It's going to be the Orchid. And uh, it looks like both teams are going to go back to farming. Now we'll take another quick look at that, uh, at that team fight at mid lane. Just to see exactly what happens here. DK goes in. He goes into ulti form. Immediately BKBs. And with Wit dead right off the bat. Well things are really difficult. You can see Night Stalker there. He's doing his best to bring down anyone. But he's not really a carry hero. He can sort of look to focus down. Isolate one hero. But... He just doesn't have the damage to actually win a fight. And there's Queen of Pain at the back line. Lincoln Sphere makes sure that the Void doesn't land. And then he finishes off the Night Stalker there. Night Stalker, once the BKB is worn off, he becomes so much more vulnerable. At this point in the game, Night Stalker, well, he's not a damage dealing carry. He's got the silence. He's got the tankiness. But he can't really deal damage. I mean, that entire fight, he got ignored. He's going to can't be ignored here. He's doing a lot of damage to this Mag. Mag, who silence up, gets brought down. More golden farm going. Track gold as well. Let's track going to be next. Another track kill as well. Track gets off just in time. Two quick track kills going the way of the Dire team. And oh, Nyx Assassin was looking for Impale. Not going to quite find it. Queen of Pain silence up. Can they bring down Queen of Pain in time? Problem is there's not enough damage. Nature's profit here, but silencing isn't there just yet. Bounty Hunter trying to bring down this Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain does manage to blink out here. Night Stalker still chasing. Where's that Lincoln? It's going to be up soon. Silence comes off once again. And Queen of Pain on the run. Not going to get the Lincoln. Oh, Lincoln comes up just after the void. He would have loved to block that void. Gem now on the ground, and Gem gets picked up by the Night Stalker. Buybacks are plenty. Queen of Pain going to be the first to buy back. He wants to kill this Night Stalker, maybe. Try regain that gem, and here comes the Wisp once again with the Bounty Hunter. The Wisp Bounty Hunter, this face rush lineup is just paying off. Constant aggression, constant track. Got Sonic away from the Queen of Pain. He may have found the opening he was after. He brings down Nature's probably wants to go on the next target. Wisp makes himself up. He keeps himself alive a bit longer, but not going to be long enough. Less track finishes him off. There's the sideline. There's your gem being reclaimed. Queen of Pain finishes off the Night Stalker, and Night Stalker, well... He had the gem for about a grand total of about 20 seconds. Queen of Pain fought back and said, I want my gem. It was a man on a mission. Well, a, a devilish woman on a mission. As question mark, question mark, question mark, gets his gem back. And at this point in the game, that's pretty crucial. We want to be able to have vision of Bounty Hunter, as well as the Nature's Prophet. Both those two heroes with their invis. Not to mention giving away a gem to the opposing team when your DK has a Shadow Blade. Well, it's giving away free detection of him. DK now getting to work on his Salt Crest. He's got his Hyper Stone already up. And he's going to be level 16. Yep, he had only a level 2 ultimate in that fight. But during that fight, he hit level 16. So in this next team fight, we're looking at a DK with a level 3 ulti form. Oh man, this poor, poor mag though. Still no Blink Dagger in. Well, when you're 1 and 8, that's going to happen. Just the Arcane Boots, just the one. Nature's Prophet continuing to farm. He's 3, 4, and 12. He's been involved in a lot of these team fights, but he's, he's going down and he's not getting kills. He needs to be sort of just looking to be even more selfish in some ways. May at the top lane getting closer to this Aghanim Scepter. That'll help out a lot as far as not getting caught by surprise. It's still night time for quite a while now. We'll have to wait and see if they can make use of that. Pacific, Queen of Pain. Looking to get his next big item up. It's going to be the Scythe of Ice. Ultimate Orb is up, as well as a bit of gold since he's picked that, and, well, what's it going to be? 
As, uh, quickly get away from there. Mag, still no blink. Question is, when does it come up? And that's once, well, once the blink's back up, that's where we have to look at, well, the Dyer team playing very, very cautiously. They know that once blink is up, things are going to go bad for them. Oh, where's Night Soldier? They were looking for Mag here in the jungle. They sniffed him out. They didn't know exactly where he was, but I think they saw him leave this bottom lane. Oh, Queen of Pain finds the Rubik in mid. Solo kill onto that Rubik. The Lincoln Spear blocks the Telekinesis, and uh-oh, the damage may not be done. Wisp right into a Nyx Assassin, right into his own death. Two kills in quick succession. And it's Nature's Prophet who's forced to TP out. He's finished off his Orkin now. But for Pacific, well, they're not too worried about the items, the split push happening, because they're just going for an all-out push of their own here in the top lane. DK and Lesh are going to take down this Tier 1 tower with ease. The question is, do they continue on? Do they go for the Tier 2 with Wisp and Rubik down? Well, at least Wisp being down. Rubik going to respawn soon. Maybe they can look to do so. Queen of Pain still holding on to that gem, still looking to get that side of the Vise up. Not just, not there yet. Problem's going to come when we see an Agonim Scepter on Night Stalker, because Night Stalker can really just isolate heroes, find them on their own really easily when you get that uninterrupted vision. He's doing just that. He's on the chase. It's Mag. Oh, Mag. Still no Blink Dagger, and once again getting caught out. Oh, Night Stalker may have overextended. TK's there with a level 3 ulti form. Night Stalker, well, he gets burst down with relative ease, and now Nature's probably going to try to get brought down, but oh, Wisp, he's come in. Wisp, oh no, he's got 7 seconds. He's going to survive. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. He's going to survive. He gets out of there just in time. DK now still in the front lines. They want to bring down Bounty Hunter. Bounty Hunter's going to BKB. He may have to use it. He does do so. Question is, can he still survive this track? He wants the extra movement speed from that track, but there's nowhere to run. There's nowhere to hide. There's a Queen of Pain with the jab. Queen of Pain chasing him down. Blinking on after. One more blink will seal the deal. Blink, scream. Nope, not even needed. Let's track with the Lightning Storm. Gets the kill. All is not well for you, Mr. Gangster Bounty Hunter. His name is very, very deceptive. Maybe it's all as well if you look at this Nature's Prophet getting some more farm, but the other two key heroes, the Bounty Hunter and the Night Stalker, both go down in that fight. Scyther Vice now going to be the item of choice for Queen of Pain. Completed as well. Queen of Pain chasing, chasing. Can he get there in time? Sheep, yes he does. Arsian, no mana for an ultimate from Queen of Pain. TP, TP, you're not going to do so. The Sprout gets cancelled by the Lincoln Spear. Queen of Pain gets another kill. His 17th kill of the game. This Queen of Pain is just carrying this Pacific side on his shoulders. As uh, the rest of the Pacific team, well, especially this Mag, he's needed some heavy lifting. What in theory is the strongest hero on this Pacific side, he has been getting, looking like absolute food to this Dire team, to the gangster squad. Oh, Wiz Night Stalker once again, it's, it's Mag they want. They pop the, the Night Stalker ultimate, but that silence is not going to last very long time. There's your Mag ultimate, catches both of them in it. Wisp is going to be going back home, home in a second, but it doesn't happen soon enough. Mag, he was a successful bait, and the question is, can they get the Night Stalker as well? Doesn't look like he's too damn fast, or does it? Oh man, Queen of Pain coming in from the sidelines. Lincoln does get broken here. Jellicanese is going to slow down the Queen of Pain's advantage. There is a side device. Got to use that. Use that side device. He brings down the Night Stalker. Side device is still there. Bounty Hunter doesn't even get a chance to use his PKB. The Vlad's BKB, the item build is there, but he gets burst down, chain disabled. Great coordination coming out from this Pacific team. And they're not done with their aggression. Tier 2 tower at the bottom lane takes a fall. Assault Crest now up to DK. This farm coming out of him is absolutely insane. All Gates can look to do is send this Nature's proper top, go for a bit of a split push. They just can't take a team fight right now. Their lineup was meant for dominating the first 20 minutes of the game. Not going 35 minutes in and taking team fights. They haven't got really the, the AoE damage or the AoE lockdown to win a team fight. All they've got the ability to do is just Rambo, chase heroes, tank things up and go for kills. And uh oh, Queen of Pain, well, he's the king of going for kills. Oh, no side. He needs a sheep. Oh, Queen of Pain may have into a bad situation here. In comes the Rubik and Whisper. Problem is, Nature's Prophet has already left. This is a dead Wisp. Two seconds was, was all he needed to try and bait that one out, but he didn't manage to survive it. Elsewhere, DK gets himself an Aegis. The other three heroes finish off Roshan, and they're looking to get aggressive now. 
DK with this assault cross. What's going to be the next item? There we go. There's his next item coming out soon. And for Gangsta, it's just so difficult for them to find a team fight right now. They just haven't got the composition which really does well there. They're all about the ganking stage. They're all about that early to mid game and just getting this huge, huge, aggressive snowball effect happening. Get track kill, track kill after track kill. Get Night Talker, Tanker and Tanker. Get Whisk getting killed all over the map, but it hasn't really happened. They had some mixed success, but all in all, well, they had quite a bit of success. They were actually leading for some time, but now it's Pacific starting to pull away. Despite the kills being so even for such a long time, this is all the track gold. This gold lead was purely track. XP has been, well, at one point Pacific were behind by 5k, but right now 15k XP advantage going the way of the Pacific team. They have really turned things around in the last 5-10 minutes. And this Queen of Pain has been the main reason why. Go Scepter. MKB, he's going for it all. And the Ghost Scepter will definitely help out when he's silenced. If he gets silenced up, all he's going to do is pop a Ghost Scepter. It's a cheaper, alter it's a cheaper alternative to a BKB. Generally, you go for a BKB here if you're Queen of... If, well, not generally, but if you want to cancel out the signs, you go for a BKB, but the Ghost Scepter achieves the same thing. You just have to wait out the silence to expire, and with a Ghost Scepter, they're not doing any damage. They haven't got any nukes. There's no actual magic damage to go through this Ghost Scepter. So when you get silenced up, you just pop the Ghost Scepter and wait it out. Sure, this silence lasts a bit longer than the Ghost Scepter. Eight second duration, but it's it's long enough. They can't even kill the Queen of Pain. Too damn tanky. And DK going to catch up Heinrich. Wisp goes down once again. Wisp has just not had a good game. After his fantastic Night Stalker last game, he's having a bit of a disappointing one here. And now we see Pacific going high ground here. They're going to go for this tier three tower. Nothing this dire team can do. DK just too damn tanky with this Assault Crest. And now, well, he's got an Aegis on him. Just sitting in the front lines, bringing down these Raxes if possible. He's already got the tier three tower. Now he wants to move on to these Raxes. BKB from Night Talk. He's just going to run it. He ignores the DK, trying to catch up the back lines. He wants his mag. Mag finally with a Blink Dagger. Can he get off an RP? He's been struggling to do anything all game long. But right now, they don't even need an RP. Queen of Pain gets basically a solo kill on Bounty Hunter. Forget RP. Let's just get Raxes. A Soul Crest is there. Mag with a skewer back. Blink Skewer is just as good as this point as an RP. Gets an easy pick off, and now Bounty Hunter and Night Talk are both dead. Nature's Prophet, the only hero with any DPS left standing, and Pacific are going to get this tier 3 tower point, but now follow up with the set of Raxes. Nothing to keep them alive. The minus 5 armor from the Assault Crest making it even easier to bring down the Gangster base, and this could be the end for the Filipino team. Well, for one of them. Gangster Black, they've had a good run, but. They now find themselves down four Raxes. DK still sitting with an Aegis, and well, what do you do here if you're a gangster? So few of so few of an options. They've got to just keep trying to gank and isolate heroes. Go for the split push with an Aegis, probably have with Wisp Knight Sorg or Wisp Bounty Hunter. Just go for pickoffs, go for ganks. They can't team fight. Team fights will never work out. Every single hero on the Radiant team is built for team fights. For the Dire team. Nobody is built for team fights, apart from maybe Rubik. Rubik's the only good team fight hero they have. Whereas for Radiant Team Pacific, well, Queen of Pain, fantastic. Let's strike decent. Mag, Nix, and DK all fantastic at team fighting at this point. When you got this much from the DK, Carapace is great. You've got an AoE Sun and the Impale. Mag, well, Blink Screw can pick your fearers off, and well, Blink RP can just win a fight on its own. Hex, they're going to find Bounty Hunter. There's another pick off going the way of Pacific. I mentioned that it's gangs need to get pick offs. They're not doing it. They're feeding away kills. Heinrich cannot relocate into the middle of a terrible position. He gets caught out. Two kills go the way of Pacific, and now they're going to go towards the top lane. With 50 seconds to get this last set of Raxes with two heroes down, I think they go for it. Nature's probably said, oh shit, we've got to go all in. Picks up the Desolate, and now it's basically all or nothing here at the top lane. There's no buyback for him. There's no buyback for Night Stalker. None of these heroes. It's all or nothing here. Luckily, there's a tier 2 tower to stall things up a bit. You can see Wisp and Bounty Hunter back online in about 20 seconds here. No glyph though, they're trying to stall as long as possible, but how long can they actually stall? And with two heroes still on the sidelines, this could be at least a tier 3 tower, most likely Raxes. And if it's Raxes, well then, then we're looking at GG. Nates is probably just going for a split push up bottom lane, realizing he can't defend while he's got two teammates. So he's going to have to TV back soon because, well, without these Raxes, it's GG. Where are you, Nates' Prophet? Mid top melee Rax is going down, Rax is down. Nice Walker immediately hangs up, can't BKB, oh no. Needs to get his BKB off, he's stunned up, he now gets his BKB off, but he's already so damn low. Mag trying to get up an RP here, it's not really succeeding doing so. Now Let's Track, Ghost Step to keep him alive. Nature's probably done some decent damage here, Mag still hasn't got an RP off. 
Where's that Blink RP? There we have it. Blink RP gets black on his Nature's Prophet and now he moves on to the next target. GG is caught. There's your team white. You complete the Ubos as Gangster. Some last minute congratulatory words come out from them. It's going to be a tough, tough defeat for them. But hey, they're going to congratulate their fellow countrymen. They're going to continue to cheer them on. They're happy for Pacific because right now we've got a Filipino team in your top six teams. They're going to fight on tomorrow. This was our last match of today, guys. We had an all-Filipino affair with Pacific Esports 2. They managed to take down the Dyer team. They took on and defeated the Gangster Black team. And, well, congratulations to the, to the Pacific squad. Big thanks, everyone, for tuning in on the live stream. Big thanks, everyone, who came down to the live event here in Singapore, supported the live event, the Armageddon and Dota 2 Asia Grand Slam. I'm Gods from Beyond the Summer, and this has been a fantastic day of game. We've got two more ahead of us, guys, so be sure to tune in tomorrow where we have our winner bracket semi-finals. We have ABC up against First Departure, as well as Awake taking on Hurrah. So we've got two winner bracket semi-finals tomorrow, as well as additional loser bracket games. That's all tomorrow, guys. So tune in again on the live stream. Come on down to the live event here at the Marina Bay Sands Convention Center in Singapore. Guys, it's been a great day. Huge shout out to all of our sponsors here at the, at the, the event. E-Club, AMD, Starhub, Asus, RGN, Rapture Game Network, as well as Zook, Sonic Ear, as well as Power Logic. Guys, as said, tune in again tomorrow. I'm Gods from the Other Summit, and this has been a fantastic day of Dota 2 action, the Armageddon Dota 2 Grand Slam Asia. We'll be back tomorrow, guys. See you later.